Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kazurix which we're playing as Goringia, Bong Goring's handsome little state which uh, probably not going to be easy but rule through submission. Middle Africa has collapsed and Bong Goring's fiefdom seems to be the last vanguard of German rule in the continent. Against any odds, Goring is determined to not just secure his state but eventually restore German rule to Africa. Whether he can achieve his goal or even survives anyone's guess. So declare one Rwanda, Burundi, Zanzibar, restoring order to the dark continent is Goring's sacred mission. Sound the drums. Gather the funding. Raise the armies. Send the poppies. Well, let's go with the raise the armies, because we're going to need these guys. Let's shot at the call. Africa has fallen. Only Goring's hand can save the continent from barbarism. The armies must be raised for Africa, for the shot Hitler and for Goring. So, the AI set this up a whole bunch. I'm not exactly sure what we have. So, it's any kind of anyone's guess. Um, three divisions of 18 combat, with, which is okay. Can't change everyone's division template either. So, and these guys are old 14 combat, which uh, that's not bad. And we have two motorized, which are halfway decent. So we're at war with these guys. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we do well, and hopefully we break out of here as well. So uh, We're at war with no redizing, so that's not ideal, to be honest with you. Um, I guess we're fighting those guys. Oh, I guess not. sort of ish as well. As long as we're not fighting them, that's what I really care about in the end. Um, I'll be honest. That'd be for the best. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Second Arab Revolt. Um, let's do that. Also, I do want to apologize. If it if the audio is too loud, please let me know in the comments below. I was messing around with it, and I kind of screwed it up just a little bit. So, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes on occasion. Go quickly. Go quickly. In the castle. Oh, in at the castle. So in the jungles of Goringia, a monstrous fortress towered above even the tallest of tree canopies. At first glance, it would seem like nobody was home, but in a remote corner of the structure, the dim light flickered. Goring, a veteran ace and ruler of a territory twice the size of Germany proper, smoked a cigar in his office as thunder rumbled outside and boom lit up the walls of his room, displaying the diverse array of wall mount present. Ranging from lions to giraffes to hippos and everything in between, Goring sighed as he signed off on yet another document condemning a pygmy tribe to execution by firing squad. It was an unfortunate thing to have to do, but the tribes had only gone in the way of his plans to transform Goringia into its proper domain. They left him no choice. Soon, he thought. Goringia would be the most developed region of Africa, thanks in no small part to his connections to German industry. Still, he was not content. There was much more to do, and he did not wish to dis disappoint the Kaiser and lose his position. His rivals had crowded him around for years, even after he sp sent his secret police to kidnap their families. For every one he had disappeared, two more popped up. Goring stood in the jungle outside his window. The thunder that shook the jungle now was almost symbolic of the crises he faced, but Goring knew that with enough determination, he would endure the coming crisis. Just as his jungle would. Absolute power was what Goring craved most and would not allow anyone to steal it from him in this last hour. Where did I put the morphine? Yum yum. Kenya is gone. Let's go over here and try to link up with these guys if we possibly, possibly can. Uh, we're fighting Deutsche Malafka. We're fighting pretty much everybody in the Reich's pact. That's everyone in the Reich's pact in Africa, so. Very nice. So we should be able to move all the way through here because I guess these guys did get this area, so that's pretty good. Fisher packs for now, trying to build some civvies, whatnot, you know. Normal stuff. Go, go in, go around, you know, all the good stuff. Rule through submission. Oh, crap, we actually do go to war them too. That's not good. Peace conference is over. Oh! Well, alright. We're down here. We're down here, too. Nord Rodizin. If they could die, that'd be great. Pops in the middle. Oh, well, you know what? Do we really deserve this? Not really. But we're going to take this anyways, because we can. There you go. So, if you occupy territory, civilian oversight is probably for the best. For the best. So it depends on what happens. If you guys could just get down there and capitulate them like that, I would actually really like that. Cameroon, Christmas Soldier, yes, please. Christmas Soldier, yes. Good. Rhodesia has enemies to fight too. Plenty of political power. War propaganda would not be 
bad. We're mobilizing more. We're gonna need more manpower, but we also want to get some soldier. Get manpower just in case. Raise armies, paying cash, paying blood. Uh, Goring's hundred or hundreds. More attack and defense. Goring's thousands. Hmm. I like the stability though. You get more attack and defense. They will fight. Hmm. Paying cash. I kind of like that one. I like this one more. You get more attack and defense. An elite army. A large army. It's only 2% less. I kind of want you to see what paying blood's like. Money secondary, the only force that matters to the Shadah Hitler is fear. Every soldier, general, everyone in Goringia will be loyal to Goring and only Goring. Those who show even the size of the will be taken care of swiftly and brutally. Not a bad idea. Oh, they do have guys in here, don't they? Are you flipping kidding me? See what you can do. Sure, guys. South Rhodesia wants up south. Yes. Nice. Breakout, breakout, breakout. Honestly, and also as well, like if this doesn't work well for us, then I'm just going to say screw it and just use cons commands because at Kaiser Redux, it's, it's not made so it's super balanced. So, pain blood. Uh, Goring's thousands, or we can skip that and do Forge by Blood. That might work, be work, uh, well as well. Goring's not the only one to be challenged. Every little citizen must know this. A bond must be forged between every soldier, citizen, and every person in the nation between um, themselves and the Stahl Hitler. Yeah, pretty much. Are these guys on the same team? If they're not fighting each other, this is, there's a big mistake here. Description crisis. I want to say crisis. Oh, we got more divisions too. There we go. Nice. Nice. Boring loyalists. Loyalists and only loyalists. Destroy that division if you can. Focus on the offense. Forge the bond. Yeah. I made way too many divisions for no Rhodesian. Way, way, way too many. Cool. Their artillery is nice. Get some more output. What land auction are we on? They went grand battle plan, huh? So your period of firepower would have been better, but whatever. about that.
Yeah, I think I made it too strong because this this group is really geared to do really well. Unfortunately, so they will fight. There's no room for cowards and gorgs to fight. Tell them everyone will fight, no matter how mo any moral obligation, physical impairment, age, race, or any other personal hindrance to fighting. They'll fight Goring's battles or suffer the dark consequences. Absolutely true. I guess we're going to keep going that way. For now, at least. Mm -hmm. Gather the funding. To continue the legitimate government of Africa, we need funds. At the moment, the money is scarce and funds are low. I many doubt we can survive unless we gain new sources of income to continue Goring's war efforts. Regardless of how we get these funds, we'll gain riches once more. We sound the drums. The war drums beat once more. Goring's call to all loyal sons of the Vatu land of Africa will not go unhe unheeded or unheeded. But it's a call to stand by the Stahler against the lawless and thus consuming the continent. To war we march under the beat of Africa's true sovereign Goring. See the poppies. Goring's no stranger to illicit activities, including, but not limited to, uh, the production and sale of opium, with little source of legitimate income left. Uh, selling opium seems to be the last option allowed to make a profit in Africa. Should be able to kill that division off pretty quickly. Can we just slip in here, maybe? Or slip into here and just cut them off? All these guys up here? Come on. Aw, oh, shnikes. Madagascar, why? Bruh. Bruh. Nice, good. Started circling them. Ah, we're fighting them too, huh? Alright. So far, not bad. Could be better, but whatever. I need a bit of artillery, aren't they? They're not going to try to cut us off, hopefully. These guys have been easily cut off. Kill off those divisions, please. Oh, hello. Oh, crap. Now, I'll deal with these guys, too. Good. Not that many divisions of them, but still. Come on. And destroyed. Nice. See what you do about going up there and doing that. So we're about to get him circled up here. You're gonna suck, don't get me wrong. Plunder instead. Take from Th Tyson? Fair tribute, cash or chips. They will pay. It's on the drums. Issue the challenge. Make no pretensions. Here will suffice. Well, let's go with plunder instead. Who cares where we get our, gather our funds? We need cash, and we're going to get it. 
Well, I'll be darn. Plunder, loot, burn, game funds, continue our secret struggle through a new way necessary. Some say that that makes Goron nothing but a pitiful gangster, tensing the good name of the cause, but who cares what they think? Kill him off, anyways. Nice. See what we can do. Just keep him in place. One gigantic mess. Hey, why are we researching field hospitals? All right, well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Ah, Rudy's gone, which is nice. What a mess. Let me just take that instead. Good to good, good to good. I should be there very soon. Nyanza. Grab it because you can. Nice. Well, Batavia. Their tribute, hidden treasures. There's more to money to be made in a land, which means that aren't pillaging or drug dealing. Mineral riches in Tan Tanjunika can be taken to fund either the war effort and Goring's increasingly expensive tastes. As they should be. Oh, we got cut off, didn't we? Oh, that's not good. She's very bad. Lost 14,000. We've got up quite a few, though. It's pretty nice. Not perfect by any means, but still. Should be able to take out that division, right? Be a little bit of cast, maybe. Good, it's good. Not good over here. He's doing okay over here. They will pay. Pay our tribute. No. Seed them here. Seed them everywhere. We need opium and a lot of it, and we need it now. We should have grown large amounts of opium everywhere we can. Plant seeds everywhere we can, and we harvest it later. Alright, so we broke through here, which is good. But they also broke through here, which is not good. But we broke through here too, which is also very good. Very generic for now. It's fine. Drug Empire grows! It's a big old towel right there as well. Nice job. Keep these guys in place if you can. Wait, what, 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 why did this guy spawn again? We literally, literally killed him off. What the heck? I literally do not understand. Cavalry needs more division templates on them. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's cheating. That's some straight cheating by the AI, so... I'm going to have to redo this up here, just because this is crap. We literally took them out already. So 
Mr. Wall seems a little bit. A life of luxury. As Irvin Goring lay awake in bed one night, he realized that he was missing something. He control over a large chunk of the former middle African colony, he was becoming the richest man on the continent. And his several servants to attend to every woman in need. Goring could not place his dissatisfaction until he thought of all his extravagant outfits. Beautiful as they may be, he had little else to give to life to his castle. Even his office was limited to a, a few wall mounts, and that room badly needed ragged decoration. Goring stood up, careful not to disturb his wife, and left the room. He called a meeting of his most trusted advisor, despite it being the middle of the night, and when everyone was seated, he began. He threw his eyes of eye rubbing old German men that he wanted to build a new pool of massive size with tiles made of gold making up for the floor, pool floor. A few of his advisors shook their heads in confusion at this request. Obviously not comprehending Goring's brilliance to go along with this pool, he demanded a motorized surfboard so he could traverse his pool in comfort. His next requests were for a giraffe skin rugs in every room of his house, a golden cigar, and a pair of eye massagers, which would puff air into his eyes to relieve them from after a long day of work. Next, he was now wealthy enough to buy his own personal tank, and he demanded that this be done at once. The roads were becoming too bumpy as of late, and he wanted to smooth them, them out himself. Seeing one advisor drift off to sleep, Goring pulled out his pistol from the roof's robe and shot the man three times in the torso. When the deed was done, Goring sat in his chair, put his feet up on the servant boy's back, and lit a cigar, smiling at the now wide-awake advisors. We've got work to do. The finer thing. Goring was one of the last few clever men who profited from the collapse of Middle Africa and done so by transforming the drug trade to serve his own ends. In fact, Goring had turned the African drug trade into the most profitable of its kind on earth, but it was no easy task. Regardless, the collapse of Middle Africa meant the elimination of any regulations regarding drug production, sale, and consumption. This helped immensely, but what also helped was the region's natural richness in methamphetamines, among other drugs or drug ingredients, while Goring was still forbade his soldiers from smoking cigarettes. Nearly everyone in Goring, a native or otherwise, knew someone involved in the rapidly growing trade, and Goring was now considered the richest man on the continent. He was wealthier than the sultans of Egypt and Morocco, richer than any of his businessmen in national France, and certainly towered over any of his rivals in the other breakaway states of former German Middle Africa. With free reign over his drug trade, Goring had turned from a ragtag bunch of delinquents into a truly formidable organization, bribing politicians, circumventing laws, and addicting hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Now Goring was wealthy enough to enjoy the finer things of life, and that was just what he did. After renovating his jungle fortress, Goring had decided to create a hippopotamus farm, in which he would keep the animals for his own enjoyment and, of course, to show off to visitors. He had the money to buy hundreds of different exotic outfits, more than he could ever dream of. He even melted down skulls to serve his paint on one of his new automobiles. The best part of his newfound wealth is not what he was able to buy, it is the fact that his prosperity has only just begun. Chaos Dinner and drinks. Ever since the day Middle Africa fractured, Goring had taken a liking to cooking. It was only one of the only hobbies he had given himself a feeling of peace. Today was no different. As Goring took it upon himself to prepare dinner for his guests, tonight the dish would be a breakfast made fresh from his own pork. He was convinced. It had to be a meal of stellar quality, for these were not just any guests, they were his rivals. Herr Bauer was among the men who would be joining him. Though he was not a rival, Bauer was worse than a rival. He was useless, and had been ever since the hunting trip between the two sent the men into shock. Goring sighed and sprinkled a cyanide on all the brought first, except for his own, on which he sprinkled cocaine instead. As he opened the doors to the dining room, still wearing his apron, he smiled at the seated guests. It saddened him that none of the men in the room seemed as happy to see him as he was happy to see them, but... That just meant they meant business. Goring shook his head and served everyone a dish with the sausage and seated himself with his own serving, the one with cocaine on it. He encouraged his guests to smell the oh so delicious food as he leaned down and sniffed the entirety of the brat first. As the guests were disconcerted by this move, but they did so as well, not wanting to anger their hosts. As the men ate, Goring watched each succumb to the cyanide, with Herr Bauer, the last alive, trying to drink from his glass to save himself, only to realize it was blood he was consuming instead of wine. Goring suddenly felt heat on his face, as he often did after snorting cocaine. He called his servants to bring in some eyes, and plopped it on his juice blood juice and drink it all down in one gulp. That really hits the spot, and pay our tribute. Germany may have been in Africa, but that does not mean that the German interests in Africa have subsided. Despite growing loyalty to the Kais on the fatherland, many see our state as an illegitimate fightum of Gorings, and his loyal soldiers nothing but as a group of ragtag criminals. To keep the Germans at bay, we must give them ample compensation. And since we're going to the right of everything, you know what, make no pretensions. So what if a few chiefs demand more from the Shah Hitler? We can just pay him off, avoid another conflict with it in our borders. While well, the situation is not ideal, the alternative could easily lead to the last vanguard of law and order in Africa falling. Tour the chiefdoms. Goring's warlord state has not been well received by everyone in his area of control and native chiefs. Opposed to the Shah Hitler's rule, he had fit not only to defy him, but to actively oppose his wishes. Disloyal chiefs will be punished harshly, while loyal chiefs will be rewarded generously. Fear will suffice. Complete undying loyalty to the sovereign Stah Hitler is a must, and if they cannot be loyal to, to endearment, they will be loyal to fear. Every citizen of Goring's royal will live in fear, a fear of Stah Hitler, and fear of what would happen in the slightest show of disloyalty. They will submit. No one gets away with disloyalty to the sovereign Stah Hitler. Every citizen must be, must be completely submitted, or must completely submit to the wills of Goring and the will of the state to su or suffer the consequences. Smuggle it out. Now that we have a large enough supply of opium, we begin selling it at a global stage. These drugs will be the world's standard and have p prices of befitting. Soon enough, we will be rolling in that sweet drug money and have enough to cash for our wildest fantasies and most immediate needs. Force of growth. Of course, not every farmer in this land is eager to hand their farms over for the production of opium. That may be a nuisance now, but we have more than enough force to infect them from their lands. Our first and only priority for this land is the production of opium. They will work. 
Some are more than reluctant to do manual labor for Goring's state. They cannot stand or refuse to work as treason, and every single citizen of Goringia must will be sent to either work in the battlefield or the factories, and sovereign beyond state. With initial pacification complete, Goring will uh, set out on his most ambitious task, the complete restoration of law and order in Africa. Operating out of his base in Tanganyika, Goring has declared that he will not stop until every inch of land in former Middle Africa is pacified and under his complete control. While to some it may be, seem like suicide to take on half a continent, to Goring has a sacred duty as protector and stockholder of Africa. The most dangerous game. Herr Bowles is a representative from Krupp Industries, ostensibly traveling to Dar es Salaam to promote closer ties between Goringi and the German Empire, but... When his plane arrived, he was taken for a two-hour drive through Bumpy White Pass that could barely be considered roads until finally arriving at Goring's castle residence. Uh, Goring himself greeted Bauer at the door, wearing an outfit that seemed more fitting for a safari than a formal meeting, indeed. Uh, Bauer was told that two men would be going on a hunt as soon as the new arrival changed into a more fitting attire later. As the pair set out on foot, Bauer found himself wondering why they were hunting so close to the castle. His thoughts were interrupted, however, by the buzzing of mosquitoes around his face and the time it took to swat them away. It almost lost track of Goring, who was apparently far more fit than he looked. Hose called out to Bauer to keep up, lest he lose any chance of bagging his own kill by the end of the hunt. Bauer hurried to catch up, wondering when they would get a chance to discuss real business, but Goring stopped his guest, shushed him, and pointing, pointed to a clearing that was barely visible through the dense vegetation all around them. Bauer was barely able to glimpse something up paw. A tail perhaps before it disappeared, Goring grunted and carefully pursued whatever it was, and the most uncomfortable businessman did his best to follow. As he ran through the brush, however, Bauer tripped over something on the ground, his face falling first into the dirt. He looked behind him at his feet, wanting to see what had tripped him, but as soon as he saw it, he stood up and ran, ran until he slammed into Goring. The heavier man turned and shook him, asked what the problem was, before he could tell Goring what about the skull, though. He saw the negro on the forest floor, blood flowing from a bullet wound in his neck. It was only then that Heb Bauer understood what they had been hunting. Business is sure different in Goringia, even though I thought we already killed Heb Bauer. Don't get high off your own supply. It was on a particularly busy day that him and Goring sat in his castle office, wishing he had the next supply of morphine from Germany. As his advisors droned on about native workers, begin by lions, Goring grew bored and began to daydream. He recalled that it was during the Valkyrie that thousands of soldiers were afflicted by soldiers' disease. Otherwise known as morphine addiction, however, Germany had been a hotspot for morphine since its creation in the region of 1804. Goring remembered how he himself developed an addiction to the substance after losing his eye to it. Uh, nearby warlord during the first days of Middle Africa's collapse. Uh, and the prolific supply of pep poppy straw from the Ottoman Empire meant that Goring well, had access to it ever since. Just when he thought he couldn't stand the incidents and complaints of his advisors anymore, his secretary burst into the room with a fresh supply of morphine. Goring sat with relief and made a mental note to refrain from shooting his secretary's captive brother later. He loaded his favorite gold plated syringe and prepared his arm. As he injected the sweet substance into his veins, he felt all the pain begin to subside. Now he could be the man he was meant to be. And quickly dismissed his useless advisors, opting to begin signing the amounts of paperwork on his desk immediately. And Goring's thousands. Goring troops will effortlessly overwhelm any enemy, enemy that crosses them. The Sovereign Stahitler. His army shall be the largest, most terrifying that force that Africa's ever seen. Our enemies will be cowering at the sight of Goring's mighty army. And Very good. Lavish parts were a prime feature of the Goring Castle experience, as any visitor of the forts would happily tell anyone who asked. So now it was no different in that regard, so Goring prepared to entertain business representatives from several German industrial companies, as well as a few from the aviation industry. Goring had decided to dress up as a medieval hunter for this occasion, adding a working crossbow as yet another layer of his extravagant costume. He hoped to impress his guests with his skills in archery, but his desire to impress his guests was met by his own craving for pleasure. Goring sighed with relief as he leaned down to snort the meth line he carefully organized on his desk, telling himself that this would be the best yet another successful party. At dinner, he felt a familiar sense of liveliness in his veins, and only doubt regarding his future success in Goringia and beyond quickly paid him. Despite his relaxed mood, though, he soon began to sweat. It was not uncommon in Goringia, but he found himself becoming increasingly frustrated and began pulling out his costume. As his guests talked mindlessly by the prophets of the newest advances in gym technology, he began to stare at each of them with his eyes narrowed. How could he ensure these men were not making the same offers to his rivals when he realized he could not? He finally had enough. Goring stood up, loaded an arrow into the crossbow, and shot it through the chest of the guest directly across from him, laughing. He told his servants to close the doors, only, only doors out of the room, and methodically kill the rest of his guests. When it was over, Goring stood by the window, studying the broken body of a guest who had attempted to create their own escape. He shot a few arrows into the limp body for good measure and smiled with satisfaction, thinking it had been a successful party after all. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. Getting clean. It's been in the uh, time of the week when Horman Goring would usually receive his drug shipment from Dar es Salaam. He didn't anticipate the shipment less than he normally would, largely due to the doctor's visit earlier that day. His doctor informed the large man that his health was rapidly deteriorating and that he did not cut down his drug consumption, he would, die he would even die. As he sat at his desk, compared to what the doctor had said to him, his wife gently rested her hand on his shoulder and, as always, knew what just what he was thinking. She asked him whether he wished to continue bearing the cost, both financially and physically, of so many different types of drugs. The cost was astronomical in financial terms, consuming a full 20% of Goring's weekly income. And she was also right that the physical cost was beginning to wear on him. Goring's once normal teeth had yellowed, rotting in place, and his eyes had deep bags under them, regardless of how much sleep he got in one night or another. Goring made a decision. It was time to quit. The next day, those Goring tossed a severed head of a severed to a new pet alarm. He found himself craving the sweet release of that morphine that would give him. 
Morphine was perhaps Goring's favorite drug as it made him feel nigh invincible and gave him a reprieve from his usually stressful day. Now the only thing on his mind was the morphine itself. It took everything he had, but Goring managed to abstain from usage. That night, Goring lay awake in the bed all night, unable to sleep. Before the sun even came up, he had vomited three times and felt like his heart was about to burst out of his chest. Doctors were quickly called in to check on him and explain that he was going through acute opiate withdrawal, and that he had, had to wait it out. The next few days were the most agonizing of Goring's life, but when they were over, he felt like a new man. No longer did he create the sweet release that had ironically become his prison. He was now a free man in truth. Perhaps I am human after all. By this point, we're done with this war. I mean, I'll use constant commands because I got a little tired of all, trying to fight and try to get all the way over here. It's, it was insane trying to get all the way over here. Other than that, though, we're doing all right. Um, we're still finishing up the Sovereign Beyond State, and we get a lot of war goals, and get some cores, which would be pretty nice. And hopefully we can carry this on to the next episode as well, because I like that. Also, the Congo had a crap ton of, like, weaponry. That's ridiculous how much weaponry that the nation had. They honestly have too much weaponry for their own good, in my opinion personal opinion, but who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet who complains too often. 35 hackers? Oh, okay, now we're maxed out. Alright, uh, more guns, I guess. Planes would be nice, too. Because we're still at war with these guys, too. Can we actually go to war with these guys, too? Right now? Yeah, we can. King Imperial Authority. Um, called Bucharest. A little bit of lag. Those guys, well... I guess the core states. We'll see what happens. Do we get any new new focus tree? No, we don't, which does kind of suck. Um, actually, really does suck quite a bit. Nothing down there. Rhodesia. Not quite. So. We want to take these guys out as well, but we don't really have a fleet to deal with them. I don't mind making quite a few subs, maybe. Uh, subs not bad. We can try to make some. I don't know. As long as we bomb the living crap out of it, so we'll probably spend the next episode uh, just like trying to win against everybody. Obviously, this might be the end of the focus tree, but you know, whatever. We'll do whatever we can and try to reclaim all of Middle Africa, probably, so. Oh, we're on strategic destruction. You know what? We're already here. We're going to keep going down this way. See what it's like. Because that's what the AI chose, so. But I think I'm going to end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also try to reunite Middle Africa. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.